Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode. Hope everybody's doing okay and staying safe. Appreciate you tuning in for this episode. Let me get it right into it. This is a show dedicated just to Ford and their recent F-150 Lightning reveal. How do you make the shift to electric vehicles feel real to vast swaths of consumers in North America? Well, you make a fully electric pickup truck. Now make that the best-selling truck in history, the F-150, and then price it at what can amount to be less than the gasoline version. When the Ford F-150 Lightning rolls off the production line next year, the electric truck won't be the first American EV, but it will be one of the most important ever produced. Not only because it bears the name of one of the most successful vehicles in automotive history, the F-150, but because it's a pickup truck, the most popular vehicle in North America. Now the top three selling vehicles in America are trucks, and the F-150 has been at the top of that list for 44 years. Sales in 2020 amounted to 787,000 units just in the U.S. In Canada, the F-150 is also consistently found at or near the top of vehicle sales charts. In 2020, it too was the number one selling at almost 129,000 units. If you add up the U.S. and Canada sales for 2020, that amounts to 916,000 vehicles from just two countries. Globally, in 2019, it was the number one selling vehicle, with over 1.3 million units sold, and last year in 2020, it finished out at just under 800,000 units, and that was primarily due to the overall market demand of global vehicles in general dropping about 20%. Now, I wanted to cite some numbers for perspective and just to show how significant the pickup truck market is to OEMs, especially for Ford. For them to fully electrify another iconic brand and flagship product, remember, they've just come out with the Mustang Mach-E, is a telltale sign that they really see the future in electrification. These are not just words, folks, but actions that Ford has taken. So that's why I've done this episode, solely focused on the F-150 Lightning reveal. Just like Tesla's Model 3 reveal in 2016, I believe that Ford's event is another significant milestone and a tipping point for the global electrification marketplace. It shines a light on a market space that really has not been looking at EVs all that much. The pickup truck segment. Remember, pickup trucks are not only purchased by urban and suburbanites that feel they need a big machine to get around in, but the main clientele for these vehicles are the trades industries and commercial fleets. Now, so important is this market that others in addition to Ford have also committed to it. OEMs like GM, Stellantis, and Tesla. Startups like Rivian, Lordstown, and Canoe, with many more on the horizon. The battles that are about to take place will be won for the history books. It's one thing for automakers to compete in the marketplace with electric cars, but remember, North America runs on trucks. So it's a new day and a new game when automakers start competing for market share with electric pickup trucks. And for Ford, we have the old guard shifting focus to the future, the Ford F-150 Lightning, with all the smart features F-150 buyers know and love, underpinned by an electric powertrain, the 2022 F-150 Lightning is teed up for success right out of the gate. It is due to be launched in the spring of 2022, with two battery options, a standard and extended range. These provide an EPA-rated range of about 230 or 300 miles, which is about 370 or 482 kilometers, respectively. And it will be sold and serviced through more than 2,400 EV-certified Ford dealers in North America. Now, prices for the F-150 standard range Lightning start at a surprisingly low $39,974 U.S., 
which drops to 32000 and change after the 7500 federal tax credit it qualifies for is deducted. This is for the commercial variant, and the XLT Extended Range version will start at $52,974 US. Now in Canada, pricing has just been announced, and it's to start at an MSRP of $68,000 for the same version. So, what is Ford offering in the F-150 Lightning? To start, thanks to the F-150 Lightning's dual-motor layout, one on each axle, all models of the Lightning come with 4x4, all-wheel drive, since it's full-time and it's not selectable. The Super Crew Cab with the short 5.5 footbed will be the only configuration the Lightning is built in. Ford has not yet announced if other body configurations will be offered later in production, but I'm guessing that they will. And the Lightning is the first F-Series to have independent rear suspension. Ford's slogan of Built Ford Tough is still here with the Lightning. They put it through the same testing regiment as every other F-Series pickup truck. It includes endurance towing testing, up and down, long and steep grades. The Lightning has a military-grade aluminum alloy body, Ford says, and a new frame that's beefier than the gas versions, oh well, because it has to carry the 1,800-pound battery pack. Underbody protection with metal skid plates guarding the battery and motors are there when things get rugged. Ford has not provided battery pack information yet, like whether it will run on a 400-volt or an 800-volt architecture, or any sizing. However, estimates put pack sizes at about 110 kilowatt hours and 115 kilowatt hours. Ford is using NMC design for the cells, and the packs will be assembled at Ford's Rossenville Components Plant in Michigan. Now, for power, Ford says it's targeting 426 horsepower or 318 kilowatts in the standard range model, and 563 horsepower or 420 kilowatts with the extended range battery pack. Torque is a healthy 775 foot-pounds or 1,051 newton meters with either battery pack. Now Ford doesn't state 0 to 60 miles per hour times for the standard range model. Uh, it'll likely be in the 5 second range, but it does claim the extended range model will hit 60 miles an hour in around the mid 4 second range. That's pretty fast for a big pickup truck. Now, power is important for pickup truck buyers, as they need it for payloads and towing. In the standard range model, expect a payload capacity of about up to 2,000 pounds and a maximum towing capacity of 7,700 pounds. The extended range version's maximum payload is a little less at 1,800 pounds, but the towing capacity is significantly higher at 10,000 pounds with the max trailer tow package. But that's not all for carrying cargo. There is also the frunk. It is huge and offers a 400-pound maximum capacity with 14 cubic feet or 400 liters of space. The frunk is water-resistant. It's equipped with four electrical outlets, two USB chargers, and it can also be used as an ice chest for food and drinks due to the drainable floor. Even Rivian has that. Now, the front can also provide up to 2.4 kilowatts of power, which is enough to output to plug-in power tools, uh, TV, speakers, a crock pot, an electric frying pan, whatever you'd like. There are lots of other power and charging outlets found in the Lightning as well. Now, one cool new feature for hauling that the Lightning has available is onboard scales, which uses sensors in the bed to estimate the payload for the driver and the truck will automatically adjust the driving range based on the weight of the payload. That's pretty cool. Now, with regards to charging, the F-150 Lightning is currently the first electric truck to offer dual onboard chargers for level 2 charging. However, it's only offered in the extended range model and has a max rate of 19.2 kilowatts. The standard range model has a single charger with 11.3 kilowatts of support. As for DC fast charging, Ford hasn't released the Lightning's maximum charging rate, but it's estimated to be at least 150 kilowatts. Now also new to this vehicle is Ford's intelligent backup power and debuts in the F-150 Lightning. Now it basically turns the Lightning into a backup power source if the power in your home goes out. 
thanks to the EV's ability to offload up to 9.6 kilowatts of energy. In order to get this new feature, you need the 80 amp Ford Charge Station Pro and a home management system that Ford can help install. Ford says the extended range model's battery pack can provide full home power for up to three days. That's, again, pretty cool stuff. On the inside, the F-150 Lightning features a 12-inch digital instrument cluster, a 360-degree camera system, and a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot as standard. An upgrade to, to the display provides a 15.5-inch infotainment screen running Ford's new Sync 4A system. This will enable cloud-based route guidance and services such as Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, or integrated Amazon Alexa apps. As in the Mustang Mach-E, the screen itself is mounted on the edge. Software over-the-air updates will also be provided on all trims. Ford calls these updates Ford Power Ups. Similar to Tesla's OTA updates, they can help improve the Lightning's performance update existing features, and can add all new features and capabilities. I love it. Ford says it takes two minutes with most updates, and the customer chooses when they happen. So, you like what you hear and you want to know when you can get one? Well, Ford will enter F-150 Lightning production, as I mentioned, in 2022 in the springtime, and they're going to build them at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Michigan. And by the way, Ford invested over $700 million U.S. in this plant, which has also created an additional 500 more jobs. Trim levels offered will start with the XLT and include Lariat and Platinum models. And a work model will also be offered for commercial fleets. Now, I haven't seen any info on when the Lightning will be available for other markets outside of North America, at least to start. But I'm sure that Ford will get to other markets over time because they do sell them outside of North America. If I quickly look at the competition now in this market, by the spring of next year, these additional players should have vehicles being produced and sold as well. We got GM with the Hummer pickup truck, Rivian, the R1T, Lordstown Endurance, and Tesla's Cybertruck. Now, others are planned for the future or hinted at, include GM's Silverado all-electric, Stellantis's Ram all-electric, and a BEV version of Toyota's Tundra or Tacoma, or it could be both, and the Canoe Lifestyle and the Bollinger B2. Now, there are a few other smaller startups, and you've heard me talk about some of those, pursuing this space, but however, until really they have something more concrete to show, they're really still a pipe dream. Now, the reality is Ford's pickup truck competition has been mainly with GM's Silverado and Dodge or now Stellantis Ram. These three models make up the vast majority of pickup truck sales in North America. GM in 2022 will offer the Hummer EV SUT pickup, but it will start at $79,995 US. And only the highest costing edition one models, priced at over $112,000 US, will be provided for first customer deliveries. Now, Rivian should already be selling and delivering their R1T pickup truck later this year. They start their pricing at $67,500 US and are really aiming this at the recreational adventure consumer space, not so much to the working needs of trades and fleets. Since they should be first out of the gate in delivering a fully electric pickup truck, I think they will do okay. However, I am concerned about how many units they can produce over time or produce over the first few years, given they have other commitments, like with the Amazon deal. So I'm really not sure how big of an impact Rivian will make on this lucrative market space, at least in their first couple of years. We'll have to wait and see. Now, Lordstown, as well, should follow Rivian with deliveries either late this year or early in 2022 with the Endurance offering. They're going after commercial fleet primarily and work use buyers by offering a capable pickup truck at a decent starting price of $52,500 US. However, again, I'm not sure of their ramp up to production rate and the number of units that they will actually be able to produce. We'll have to see. And of course, the one that gets most of the fandom attention is the Tesla Cybertruck. 
Cybertruck. Now, Tesla decided to change the game with a new design that for sure turns heads and will get many urban and suburbanites interested in a pickup truck, e even if they weren't before. The key to the Cybertruck is its entry pricing. Tesla will start it at 39000 US. Basically, I think why Ford has decided to start the Lightning's price point very close to this. Now, for this money, Tesla will offer a very capable vehicle with loads of upgrades to choose from. These features include long-range offerings, great towing specs, as well as power ratings. It has a 6.5-foot bed, so it can be usable for trades and fleet work needs as well. Now, I'm not going to cover off all the specs of these vehicles and pit them against each other, otherwise this show would be another hour in length. I will say that Ford very much knows what the majority of pickup truck users want, and they are aiming to deliver an electric F-150 with real-world capability that truck owners need. Ford is not primarily aiming at the same adventure lifestyle consumers like Rivian or GM's Hummer SUTR. Now don't get me wrong, these trucks seem to be supremely capable, yet at different types of things. Are you going off-roading and seeking adventure? Or are you looking to power the work site or home? As a comparison, the current ICE V base 2021 Ford F-150 XL Super Crew with the same 5.5 foot bed costs just under 42,000 US. So with savings for the Lightning that start at below that sticker price, before you get all the advantages of incentives, lower ownership costs, and future updates are considered, this will make the all-electric F-150 a very capable and competitive vehicle to not only Ford's fan base, but to many more. Now folks, I hope you believe with me that Ford has taken a huge step in quantifying and legitimizing for many the EV market space with the reveal of the F-150 Lightning. It doesn't have to be the best pickup truck out there but it has to offer a use case and features that pickup truck buyers want. And I believe it does in spades. To finish this coverage, many will remember when, where you were when Elon came on stage to reveal the Model 3. Now, I certainly do. I hope too that you remember where you were for Ford's Lightning reveal. In my opinion, and I believe the opinion of many others, it is really that big of a deal. And we are witnesses to yet another giant leap forward in the EV revolution. All right, and thanks for sticking out this show. I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Um, thanks again for watching on YouTube and for those that subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. If you don't, please do tell others about the show. If you like what you hear, I'd certainly love to get more subscribers. And of course, if you are helping me out through Patreon, I'm always humbled and thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Um, I always get speechless. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's very much appreciated. You can see the link below if you're interested in helping me out. And of course, my PSA, please continue to stay safe. Get your vaccines. Uh, I know here in Canada, we just clipped the 50% mark for the first first shot so in the arm. So that's really good news. We're finally you know, getting out there. Uh, and I wish everybody else uh, a good opportunity to get their vaccines and stay safe. And of course, continue to watch the EV landscape. I got lots of stuff up and, up and coming this month. Boy, June's going to be a busy month for me for car reviews. I've got three or four scheduled for this month. It's going to be busy. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching me on the EV Revolution show. And until the next time, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.